The El Pianista Trail, which the two girls took, leads through a unique cloud forest to the top of the Mirador, one of the mountains which make up the Continental Divide. After reaching the top of the mountain, the girls were supposed to return via the same trail. However, it is not completely clear if they were aware of this. The descriptions of the trail which the girls had studied the previous day failed to make clear that although the hike ends at the top of the mountain, the trail itself continues towards the Atlantic side of the Continental Divide. Perhaps the girls were unaware of the fact that they were taking the wrong trail down, but it is equally likely they simply decided to explore a bit further and see where the trail would take them. Neither of the girls carried a compass, and their only map was a useless tourist brochure which did not show the trail. We might never know why the two girls did not go back, but they were almost certainly unaware of the bad reputation of the area beyond the Mirador. Uh, the part of the jungle out there is known by the guides as jungle hell. Past the continental divide, people die up here. Months later, when the backpack containing the phones and camera was found, the route the girls took could be reconstructed, leading to a small stream where the two final images were taken. At this point, for miles and miles around, the area consists of dense forests intersected with some open areas which are used as paddocks by the few farmers inhabiting this region. Between the Mirador and the first stream, steep slopes right next to the trail lead to a deep valley overgrown with dense vegetation. Hidden among the vegetation are steep cliffs, while narrow gullies carry water down towards the main river. During the rainy season, water levels in these gullies can rise by as much as 2 meters, carrying everything to the Rio Changuanola. If for any reason the two girls entered the forest, progress must have been slow, and an accident is likely. Finding anyone in such a dense forest is next to impossible. However, if the girls managed to reach the paddocks, their chances of being found would be considerably better.
On the various pictures the girls took, it can be seen that the weather on the 1st of April 2014 was bright and clear after an exceptionally long dry period. However, at 2 in the afternoon, time was already starting to run out, and if the girls were aware of the fact that they had to take the same route back, they had less than an hour before they would need to turn around. At 16.30, the sun would disappear behind the mountains in the west, and although there would still be sufficient light out on the paddocks, darkness would fall much more quickly on parts of the trail which were leading through dense forest. Half an hour before sunset, at 1800 hours, the parts of the trail leading through deep trenches would be too dark to navigate safely. The main trail seems the most likely route the girls could have taken. Although it is not marked, the trail is frequently used by travelers, and leading for a large part through deep trenches where getting lost seems next to impossible. Following this trail would have taken the girls first to the paddocks before making to the first of three cable bridges passing the main rivers. Remarkable on this route is that the girls would reach the first cable bridge almost exactly at the moment of their first alarm call. The second alarm call matches with the highest point in this part of the route. If they continued to follow the route, the girls would reach the first farmhouses just before sunset, and this matches with the moment they switch off their phones for the night. The second route option leads north from the top of the second paddock. This trail is smaller and more difficult to follow, making it less likely but not impossible. If the girls managed to follow this route, it would have taken them to an old wooden shed right next to a stream.
This shed is only inhabited occasionally by locals tending to the cows. It is unknown if anyone was present here at the time. If the girls would have passed by the shed without stopping, the trail would subsequently have taken them back into the forest and past two smaller paddocks before making for the first cable bridge. Theoretically, using this trail, the girls could have reached the first cable bridge slightly earlier than if they moved along the main trail, however it is unlikely they would have been able to maintain the same speed on this smaller trail. And once again, the moment they reach the first cable bridge matches closely with their first alarm call. The third route option once again leads north from the second paddock, however this route leads initially through dense forest, moving further uphill. Even more than the previous routes, this route is hard to find and might have been partly overgrown in 2014, making it hard for the girls to pass through. Leading along the top of the ridge, it does not pass the wooden shed, however it may have come within sight of this place. After passing along a wide and uneven paddock, this trail leads to crossroads, with one trail leading west towards the cable bridge, and one trail leading east to another form house. Perhaps more importantly, if the girls missed these trails, this route would take them straight down into the very rough area of the belt, where many suppose the night location might be located. It seems unlikely the girls would have been able to follow this route all the way to its end. However, if they did, it would have led them to a group of two farm houses next to the river at about the same time as their first alarm call. Perhaps the most unlikely route the girls could have taken leads east from the second paddock parsing through dense forest and steep slopes before reaching the form houses near the river. From this route, however, we know it was most probably passable in 2014 as it features in another unrelated YouTube video from 2016.
Similar to the other routes, this route would also have taken the girls to the safety of a form house well before sunset. Less than 10 minutes after taking their last image, the girls would have reached the second stream crossing, which is a very idyllic spot. Everyone who walks this trail stops to take a photo or video at this spot. However, the Camry of the girls did not contain any footage of this place, which seems strange. Shortly afterward, the lookout spot on the top of the second paddock offers a wide view over the surrounding area making it all too clear they were nowhere near Bouquet. If the girls did not yet know they were on the wrong trail, surely at this point they would have realized they needed to turn back. It seems very unlikely that at this spot the girls would persist in continuing along the trail, and indeed several guides ensure us they have never seen an accompanied tourists pass this point on the trail. Everybody turns back at the paddocks. The most likely spot where they could have turned back is just before the second stream or else at the top of the second paddock. In both cases, however, they would have reached the top of the Mirad or long before the first alarm call. If we assume they only turned back at the time of the first alarm call, they would have gotten stranded in darkness 40 minutes before they made it back to the first stream. If we assume the girls turned back at the paddocks, they must have suffered some accident, falling down one of the slopes on the way back up the Mirador. However, such an accident must have happened well before 1500 hours. There are large parts of the trail where getting lost is next to impossible as the trail passes through deep trenches. At other parts, the trail passes close to steep slopes where an accident would happen long before you get lost. However, beyond the first stream, at the bottom of the first paddock, there are several points where the route is less clear, and someone who is unfamiliar with the area might possibly take the wrong turn.
There is a similar spot near the top of the first paddock, where cow trails cause a confusing situation, which might send someone off the trail. Interestingly enough, there is a documented case of a group of four girls who did indeed get lost on the first paddock in September 2013, just a few months before Chris and Lesson reached this place. If Chris and Lysen got lost on the first paddock and subsequently wandered around, searching for a way back, this would explain why there were no more pictures after the first stream crossing. However, it would not explain why they made only two calls and then kept silent for the whole night, and neither would it explain why nobody could find them. There is however another hint which points to the first paddock area. If we simulate sunrise on April 2, the sun appears from behind the easterly mountains right at the moment of the first alarm call. This match only exists for the top of the first paddock. In most other areas it would still be dark at this time. Months later, after the camera was found, the investigators noticed there was one file missing between image 508, taken on April 1, and image 510, the first of the night pictures taken on April 8. Over the past three years, a number of very good articles have been written about this missing file, proving that under specific circumstances, it is possible to replicate the situation without requiring the use of computers or special equipment. For our present analysis, however, all that truly matters is that the camera must have been switched on when the file was skipped. Listen had a habit of taking photo stops every 10 to 20 minutes, taking two pictures at each stop. So images 507 and 508 would have covered the first stream, and the next stop would almost certainly have been the second stream crossing, about 10 minutes later.
All in all, we seem to be getting strong hints towards the first paddock area and the second stream crossing as the general area where the girls left the trail, but there is not yet a complete match with the phone logs. Sightings of a red truck and three men near the entrance of the trail on the same day the girls disappeared caused endless rumors of foul play. Most of these gruesome stories make little or no sense if we compare them with a the known timeline. However, there is one foul play variant which might make sense. If the girls had a chance encounter with a group of ill-meaning persons at or near the second stream crossing, it would explain why both of them hurriedly left the trail. If these persons were transporting something illegal, it would fit in with the timeline if the red truck was waiting to transport this to Bouquet. The fact that Listen was making a video might even have been what set off the hostilities if the girls accidentally witnessed some illegal operation. It might have forced the girls to delete the video before they escaped and ran off toward the forest. Under normal circumstances, someone lost on the paddock will not enter the forest, but stay on the paddock, waiting to be rescued. Leaving the paddock in many places requires a person to pass over a fence, and anyone will understand that chances of being found in the forest are very small. In all previous cases when people got lost on the trail, they were found back on the paddocks. Entering the forest makes no sense. However, if the girls were chased, or imagining they were being chased, the forest might have seemed like their best hiding spot. It would explain why they did not leave a trail, and why they kept utterly silent and in total darkness during the first night. And Sally, it might also explain why none was able to find them.